What is up there everybody, Citrus Aviation here with Aviation News this week, episode number 87. So let's get started with the news here with the United 777 engine fire. So some of you may have heard about this, uh, probably most of you have, and that is that November 772 Uniform Alpha was departing Denver on February the 20th, 2020, heading for Honolulu and the aircraft experienced a major failing of one of the fan blades which caused the engine cowling to blow off you can see the fire on the engine now that is actually very normal because engines actually literally have a fire that burns inside as the air is sucked in squeezed in combusted and ejected out the aircraft and that combustion stage is where the fire occurs so that was actually normal if you've seen the pictures of the engine on fire that's actually normal However, of course, it's not supposed to be smoking like crazy. The aircraft definitely had a major failure of the engine. And as a result, United has grounded all Boeing 777s equipped with the Pratt & Whitney 4000 series engines, which is what that aircraft was equipped with. There are a few other airlines that operate this engine type as well. Japan Airlines has grounded their 777-200s with the Pratt & Whitney 4000 series engines as well. Only Pond, however, because they have not had any issues with this engine, has chosen not to do so. This is not the first time there's been this issue with one of the fan blades. A United 777 Sister Sip 773 Uniform Alpha, also one of the very first 777s ever built, also had a failure of one of the fan blades in 2018, as well as a Japan Airlines 777-200 having a similar issue. The aircraft are now currently being grounded and certain things have come to light and there's some reviews that are going on with the practices on how the aircraft fan blades are inspected. It's believed that there was a crack that formed in the fan blade that caused the issue. So that is all the information I currently have on the issue. Uh, as the NTSB report comes out on this incident hopefully we will know more about it and then I can do maybe a separate video on it so yeah there have been some very good videos made about the incident and uh, you can go look them up if you're interested but that is all I'm going to cover for now I will cover the the incident here I tried to actually do it in last week's episode however the photos that I was sent by a photographer who generously sent them to me had some issues where it would not load in my Premiere Pro preview correctly and so it didn't work so I was not able to cover the story unfortunately. The next story that we have here is Air Canada has officially now received permission from the Canadian government to acquire Air Transat. Now this was a deal that was started I want to say about a year and a half ago and Air Canada is to acquire Air Transit as part of a significant module they are doing. And uh, the deal that they had was to expire on February 15th. So after they announced the deal, they have a certain amount of time to send in all the paperwork and get the approval they need for the module. And that date was February the 15th that they had to get done by. So they were able to get it done just in time. The module has been approved and it will now go forward as expected with Air Canada acquiring Air Transit here in the near future. I expect this deal to occur in the next couple months and for Air Transit to be absorbed into Air Canada in some form, some way or another over the next two years. Moving on to fleet news, we have very good news for Boeing and that is that they have now surpassed Airbus in total number of deliveries for a month for the first time since the MAX groundings. So, Boeing delivered 26 aircraft in January, which is more than Airbus. However, I should note that 21 of those were 737 MAXs that were in storage that were ready to be delivered. And we're going to see that trend continue for the next several months. Because there's, uh, what is around 50 to 100 737 MAXs that still need to be delivered that are actually ready to be delivered right now. And so they're currently doing the preparations needed for delivery and then they're being delivered. So you're seeing a lot of Boeing aircraft going to be delivered and expect Boeing to once again be on top of the aircraft deliveries for the next several months. But yes, Boeing delivered 21 737 MAXs in January. That is 21 out of 26 total aircraft. So that's a big majority being MAXs. Next up, we have a story on the American Eagle E-140s and their retirement, as well as the significance that this aircraft has to American Airlines. So, for in-depth coverage on that, I would like to invite Red River Aviation to come onto the show right now to talk about the aircraft type. 
What's going on everybody? I wanted to thank Citrus Aviation so much for letting me come in to explain the American Eagle Ember Ear J-140 situation for you guys. This will be a brief rundown, but if you want the full detailed explanation, I'll have a video coming about, about the American Eagle Ember Ear J-140 situation very soon. Anyways, let's begin. The American Eagle Ember Ear J-140 has been a workhorse for American Eagle for around 20 years now with a very interesting history. American Eagle took delivery of the first Ember Ear J-140s from 2002 to 2003, receiving about 60 of the aircraft type. American Eagle was mainly ordering the more popular Ember Ear J-145 type to fulfill their flights. These aircraft were mainly found at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. This continued for many years until 2014 when American Eagle moved over to their new brand Envoy which was essentially just a name change. From 2014 to 2017 American Eagle started to store a few of their Ember Ear J-140s just because they were starting to get a little older and weren't as needed. Everything continued on pace until February of 2017 when Envoy keyword stored the whole fleet of American Eagle Ember Ear J-140s for many reasons. Now keep in mind the word store does not mean retire. Envoy had a lot of Ember Ear J-145s and 175s as the 145s were getting older they did not need them as much at the time. Then in 2018 Envoy bought back around three dozen of the Ember Ear J-140 aircrafts due to the high travel demand. These aircraft were mainly found at Dallas-Fort Worth, but as well as a few Charlotte and New York Guardia flights. Everything continued very well until March of 2020 when the pandemic happened. Envoy parked the majority of their Ember Ear J-140 fleet and a few got parked after March uh, during the uh, intermediate stage of the pandemic. Unfortunately, on February 8th, 2021, news broke that Envoy would officially retire, sources say, the rest of the Ember Ear J-140 fleet for good. This is very sad as the Ember Ear J-140 fleet was a workhorse for American Eagle. As of the making of this video, there are only six Ember Ear J-140s left in service. The aircraft being November 822 Alpha Echo, November 825 Alpha Echo, November 831 Alpha Echo, November 842 Alpha Echo, November 857 Alpha Echo, and November 858 Alpha Echo. At my local local airport, Stillwater Regional Airport, American Eagle began service to Dallas-Fort Worth in 2016. The service was mainly on the Ember Ear J-145 aircraft, but you would see a few 140s that came in a little bit. But when they completely returned in 2018, it was all you would see at Stillwater Regional Airport. As of the fall of 2020, the service has mainly went back to the Ember Ear J-145s with some Ember 140 substitutions. I have seen four Ember Ear J-140s at Stillwater Regional Airport. November 849 Alpha Echo in the old livery in January of 2019. November 857 Alpha Echo in February of 2020. November 813 Alpha Echo in July of 2020. And now November 842 Alpha Echo in February of 2021. Now let's talk about November 842 Alpha Echo for a little bit as she's a very special aircraft. November 842 Alpha Echo is an 18.2 year old Ember Ear J-140 for Envoy. She's the last Ember Ear J-140 in the old classic American Eagle colors and the last ever old livery American Airlines aircraft excluding the Boeing 737 Heritage aircraft. November 842 is a very special aircraft in the American Eagle fleet for those reasons. It was a beautiful 65 degrees sunny Monday afternoon on February 22nd, 2021. I got out of school and thought, hey, I really want to catch November 842 Alpha Echo at least one more time at Stillwater Regional Airport before she gets retired. Why don't I check Stillwater's Flight Raider 24? I did as such and loaded and behold, there was American Eagle Ember Ear J-140 substitution of November 842 Alpha Echo coming in at approximately 625 p.m. Sunset was at 616, but I thought no matter what, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to see November 842 Alpha Echo. I asked my mom if I could go to Stillwater to see it and she said, yes. I got to go to Stillwater to see November 842 Alpha Echo. Unfortunately, we were just two minutes short of some killer lighting, but I am not complaining whatsoever as I got to see November 842 Alpha Echo inbound from Dallas-Fort Worth as American Eagle Flight 3741. What an opportunity this was. I cannot thank Citrus Aviation enough for letting me go on a documentary about the American Eagle Ember Ear J-140. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and please enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you so much once again, Citrus Aviation, and I hope you guys all have a fantastic day. Thank you very much. The final fleet news item that we have for today is the KLM E190 E2 has now appeared. KLM will be the first major carrier in the world to receive this brand new aircraft type. 
The aircraft first started going into a service with Air Astana starting in early 2019. And since then there have been a couple other airlines that have gotten the E190 E2s. I think it's about five now. And KLM will be the first major airline in the world to receive the aircraft type. Here we have a beautiful picture of the aircraft in a test flight when the registration of Papa Romeo Das Echo Alpha Foxtrot taken on the 11th of February 2021. Excellent picture by the photographer here. And the aircraft will be delivered as Papa Hotel Das November X-ray Alpha. In fact, at the time that I'm actually videoing this and the date's going out, the aircraft is just being delivered. So it will be delivered as that and should see it flying around Amsterdam here in the near future. So all you photographers out there, keep an eye out for this aircraft. It looks pretty cool. And um, you can't necessarily see it from this picture, but if you look at some of the side view images of this aircraft, the engines on this aircraft are massive. They're huge. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what it looks like when it arrives here in the U.S. And I would love to go catch one. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. And God bless you.